So I'm starting this presentation with a map, because I thought that would be a clever thing to do at a conference inherently about mapping. Buried the lead here, not sure happened. Um, we're clearly looking at a map here. This is Manhattan. You can definitely see Central Park up there. And um, we sort of see three regions specifically sort of bright in the yellow. Um, we have the Upper East Side, we have the Upper West Side, and we have um, the West Village. Inherently, these three neighborhoods are kind of geospatially far from one another. They don't really have much in common, but this is actually the thing, and again, buried the lead. Uh, what brings them together? We're actually looking at a map of Tiffany's deliveries in New York City. And that shouldn't actually surprise any of you. I hope that makes sense, given, given what we sort of know about location information, that and there's implicit information sort of encoded in our assumptions. And we make every single day about geography, right? We encode stereotypes, we encode biases, and definitely real estate prices. And this is important because there is meaning in place. Location carries weight. Um, and location carries meaning. I don't think anyone here would be here uh, if we didn't fundamentally believe that. And in the on-demand space, if you don't get local, you won't get far, and uh, we get it. Uh, so this is a bit of a shameless plug for our current advertising and marketing campaign, but I do think it's actually pretty funny. So these are throughout the subways, and it's actually relevant here. So I will read this. Uh, when your friends, oh no, there it is. When your friends invite you to Indian food, but you're not really in the mood for friends, we get it. And I think this one makes perfect sense for the location being in Williamsburg. When, you're, when you want a dessert that's as rich as the parents paying your rent, Postmates, we get it. Hello, uh, thank you for our host for bringing us all together and thank you for this amazing venue um, and for putting on such a fun yet uniquely nerdy event. There we go. <laughs> Gotta get my timings right here. Space coming. Cool, uh, I'm Inu, I'm the data and analytics lead at Postmates, the leader in on-demand delivery in the US. As our title suggests, 15 million miles of burritos later, um, we'll be dipping in a bit into our field notes, gather over 15 million miles of the long burrito road. Uh, we'll talk about the new economy, the cube, our four-sided marketplace, how we're changing commerce on the local level, and most importantly, we'll have some fun along the way. At least that's the plan. Uh, before we do, though, I do want to get people a little more familiar with Postmates. It sounded like, by a show of hands, we're new to you, and that, that's good. Um, Definitely have some new customer promo cards here, so we'll, we'll get you set up by the end of this conversation. Always got to hustle. Postmates, so at the simplest level, Postmates enables anyone to tap a button on their phones and get anything from any merchant delivered to their door in minutes. While some logistics companies try to build a warehouse inside of the city and then funnel goods in, we've always believed in a simple philosophy that our cities, our towns, our communities are our warehouses. Anything, anywhere, anytime, we get it. And we get a lot of things. Um, we were founded in 2011, currently available in 300 cities and in Mexico, and we're completing about 3 million deliveries a month with an active fleet of 150,000 Postmates, transporting over a billion dollars worth of goods. There's a lot of things. Um, we're doing all of this by connecting consumers with merchants and Postmates all interacting in this new economy. When folks think about on-demand, traditionally it's a three-sided marketplace. The fourth, often overlooked, and equally important are the communities we operate in, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Before doing so, I do wanna make a quick comment about data at Postmates, um, you know, and who we are. Um, the team has always been influenced by journalism. We draw parallels between what we do in reporting and analysis, and well, journalistic reporting and analysis at our core, and I guess it's a bit hard to read here, snag from the New York Times. We believe that improving the world starts with understanding it. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about the things we've learned sort of along the way that help us understand the world that, that we do operate in and how it's changing. Um, so starting with customers. Covering a third of US households, so it's a lot of location data for the geo nerds here. Uh, we're seeing firsthand the importance of giving consumers more choice and access than ever before. We've delivered over 175 million items across 300 cities in Mexico at all hours of the day. Beyond the goods themselves, 
The superpower of Postmates is the scarce commodity of time. And it's the time we're able to give back to busy parents, senior citizens' mobility issues, you can name it. Um, our customers have already saved more than 11 million hours through the platform. Here's one great example. So that it's kind of dark, I guess you can't see it. This is a map of Los Angeles. Um, we're looking at a pickup. Pickup's the yellow, there's the drop off. Saving people tons of time. That might have happened too fast, we'll look at it again. All right, it's so not everyone's actually saving that much time, that guy's just lazy. Uh, so there are literally our deliveries across, across all cities of people ordering stuff from their building. Um, it's great. And what customers want changes throughout the year, throughout the week, and within a city itself. Um, we are healthier in summer than in winter, um, and our data can reveal when the flu is breaking out and when ice coffee season is about to start. Um, we also observe how what we want changes throughout the week. 30% um, of all bagel deliveries happen on Sunday. It's a little bit more evenly distributed in New York City because this is the bagel town. Um, proud of that. And we're certainly the best versions of ourselves on Mondays, ordering salads and juice and kale, and then by Friday we're loading up on carbs and eating a whole suite of fuku sandwiches. Um, we like to drink during elections and during presidential debates, and especially Bud Light on the 4th of July, America. Um, and within New York City itself, clicker, there you go. Uh, we have our own preferences for sort of just alcohol and beverages. So it uh, might be difficult to see here, but you know, Tribeca is definitely a Tito's vodka kind of place, and the West Village consumes really shitty overpriced rosé. Again, location carries meaning. Um, and with all this choice at our fingertips, let's take a quick look into what customers are actually ordering. Um, so this will be a little bit interactive. I'll put two deliveries on the board, walk through the details, and you guys will have to guess which one is fact and which one is fiction. Uh, so audience participation is requested, encouraged, et cetera. Delivery one, delivery two. So our first delivery is in New York City. It's from a place called Shabu Tatsu. I think it's in the East Village, if anyone's from in there. Uh, deliveries for $0. I'll let you read what the request is. Please go there and pretend you're gonna eat and make a reservation for three people under the name Michael Jackson. Shouldn't be a wait, you don't have to wait. But if you're female, put Janet. It's contestant number one. Contestant number two, oh, there he is. MJ showed up. Contestant number two is also a delivery in New York City. Uh, it's from Barnes & Noble. It's for a post $18 book, and the book is called One Rich People Problems Book. Um, and for additional bonus context, it was delivered to the Trump Soho. <laughs> Any guesses as to which one is fact and which one is fiction? What do you want? One's gotta be fact. Two is fact. One is fiction only because I wanted to use this photo of Michael Jackson. This is actually also a real delivery request. I abstracted the names. Uh, but there is, you could, with an open platform, an anywhere platform, you can get some interesting things. And I think to your point, like life, the, someone actually ordering a Rich People Problems book to the Trump Soho is just like choice. It's real. Um, <laughs> the fleet. We have customers, we have our fleet. Um, and I really want to stress how amazing our fleet are. Behind me is, you can maybe see this. Behind me is just a quick visualization of a few hours of deliveries in LA where we light up the city. Our fleet has traveled over 200 million miles through rain, snow, storm, slush, everything in between. They've generated over $215 million in, earning, many, in earnings, many as students, inspiring entrepreneurs, or just parents with a little extra time after dropping off their kids. Um, and over these 200 million miles, we've recognized that you don't need a two-ton car to move a two-pound burrito. Um, so we're, I stat here, 82% of our deliveries in New York City are emissions-free. We're, as a, as a company, investing in new modes of urban transportation, e-bikes. We have an e-bike and scooter program in multiple cities, uh, and we also have a robotics unit, which I can speak to later. Uh, the goal here is to increase efficiency in moving food, products, and parcels. Um, on the topic of food, products, and parcels, we deliver very, what we deliver varies quite a bit, and again, our Postmates always go above and beyond. We deliver from 30 categories, from furniture to ice luges to late night medicine runs and, and diapers. Uh, among my favorite things to track, this is, this is, just, this is me in here, um, is the growth and explosion in avocado toast deliveries. If we were having this conversation in January 2016, avocado toast was a thing in four cities, and now it's being ordered and delivered in over 100. 
Um, it's actually not that easy to deliver, depending on whether it's a fried egg or a poached egg. Um, that those don't transfer well. Um, and one of the other great things, this is kind of insane, is how much pet food we deliver. So I, I put together this map mainly because I do find this sort of this color to be kind of fun. Uh, but this is, this, is, this is the pet food map of New York. So amazing category for us. Our Postmates have literally moved over 100,000 crickets, myself included. I, you pick them up at PetSmart, they are an actual good you can buy. Um, again, if I haven't said enough, our Postmates are amazing. Um, but not surprising to most, I think New York City is definitely a dog city um, with a few pockets of cat lovers and one community of hamster lovers in, I, I don't know what neighborhood that would be in, uh, in Brooklyn, but again, location matters. Um, so another round of fact or fiction, this time focused on the amazingness of the fleet. Same rules apply. Different MJ this time. Delivery one, delivery two. First delivery is in Seattle. Uh, from what, what's general stores, this is basically our general store. You can order from anything, we'll go pick it up. Um, not in important detail. Total is $8.48, and here is what the customer asked, and our postmate was obliged to do. Uh, order one Reese's peanut butter cup. Take one peanut butter cup out of the package, place directly into my mailbox. You can keep the rest of them. Um, so again, above and beyond, the Postmates are amazing. I guess they're helping folks out with their dietary regimens as well. Uh, delivery two is in Raleigh, Durham. It's from Kroger, a total of $60.29. Um, and I'll let you guys read part of this yourself. I think, I think we've all been there. Uh, I did admit one part from the second delivery, which was the customer said, hey, no more than 75 bucks, and they were able to get in, in 60, so I feel, feel proud about that. They're, they're judicious and they're frugal at the same time. Um, so yeah, fact or fiction, what are we thinking? Two, two is what? Two is fact. I trolled all of you, they're both fact. They're just, these, this, is, this, is, this is real, right? Um, humans are great. Yeah, anywhere platform. Um, so we talked about customers, we've talked about our, our fleet. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our partners, the merchants we have. Um, we're giving local retail a new lifeline to reach customers. Corner stores, once confined to corners, are now reaching new audiences. Um, we've delivered from a quarter, quarter million merchants across the country. We have 25,000 in-network partners, and that 80% of these are unique to Postmates. Um, for folks who do join the platform, they are seeing 3.7x growth after joining Postmates. Um, once a partner joins the platform, we're able to expand their reach and introduce them to new customers. So this is a quick case study. This is uh, one of the sort of stronger partners on our platform. We basically converted them into a partner. Um, they grew a thousand percent new customers and they actually took market share from some of their competitors. Um, but not only are we sort of extending your geographical reach, you join and you, we become more efficient doing it. So we're actually saving customer time and postmate time based on an integration with, with, with a merchant. Um, and ultimately we're also just moving things further. Right, so in this specific example, we, our drop-off distance is increased by 42%, um, but we will take your product, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it to new, new folks, expand your reach, introduce you to new customers, and then also uh, actually physically move it further, so it's great. Um, for our larger partners, and I don't have too much time to, to, to dig into this, we do use location data and demand patterns to help them plan. So how, do you, where, how and where do you launch new stores? Where and how do you penetrate new markets? Um, and it's, 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 it warrants its own presentation, but it's super interesting and, and happy to talk a little bit after. Um, the last thing I learned so far sort of in Postmates is that if you already have a stock slide with Danny Trejo on it, you should just talk about it. So it turns out Danny Trejo is a uh, taco store owner in California. Um, and I, you know, one, he's amazing. Two, the fact that he owns a taco place or a chain of taco places in Southern California is also amazing. Um, but I think the, the, point, the point should go the point shouldn't go unnoticed. Postmates delivery adds to our growth with new customers, doubled revenue each week in new jobs. We've added personnel, staffing, et cetera. And so sort of as we think about all these different components, and again, we sort of going through relatively quickly and touching on a few different topics, but we have customers, we have our Postmates, we have our merchants, putting it all together, you know, how are we impacting communities? Um, and just another biz, this is just New York. 
And so when you put it all together, you're, 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 you're having customers spend a little bit of money and Postmates are earning money and tr driving it towards local, local partners. They're producing more, they're selling more, they have to hire more. There's a sort of economic multiplier and economic effect that we're seeing. Um, so in a study in Postmates markets versus other versus sort of non-Postmates markets, we're seeing a 1% lift in employment growth, about a quarter billion dollars in increased GDP and $6.6 .6 billion in total economic activity. This is again from the accelerated spending, sales, um, and sort of hire and rehire cycle. So the flow, every dollar spent on the platform generates economic activity in the community, and then we can bring communities closer together by facilitating this trade. And um, if you're more interested more, again, happy to answer questions, we have more detail around all of this. Um, I do wanna close here. Um, you see I like yellow and black for, for maps. As we've talked about local and about neighborhoods and about communities, I wanted to share a community-based sort of import-export map of, of Manhattan. Uh, our yellow regions here are primary net, net exporters. They are shipping out their goods, tacos, burritos, ramen, et cetera. Uh, black is our net importers, people consuming this, but not actually sort of contributing back to, to the communities. Um, and grays are sort of our neutrals, the folks with our uh, balance of trade. And we talk about this a lot internally and see an incredibly incredibly powerful force of the app in bridging communities and enabling exports from neighborhoods on one side of town to reach neighborhoods on other sides of town. Um, we see this sort of in San Francisco with the outer sunset and the mission in LA. We have sort of these, these communities that are now connecting and, and we talk a lot about the perfect city. If you can see sort of in San Francisco, San Francisco is actually a bit more interesting than New York. I think New York's a little more established. San Francisco's going through this sort of growth phase right now, um, but you can, you can see which neighborhoods have Safeways and have supermarkets and how, that, how those items are moving. And uh, you know, if you're, you're playing SimCity and it's real, then you, you probably want to have a burrito place, one place to get kale salads, um, and then one place to get groceries and maybe, maybe a soup dumping place, depending on the market. Um, but I do want to say this, in San Francisco and LA and, and really anywhere in our backyard here, you know, we see across the country in cities and towns, big or small, wherever locations are in this sort of new economy, those locations carry meaning. Um, and it's meaning that, admittedly, like if this was a spreadsheet, you wouldn't have any clue what the hell's going on. And you honestly might not have any clue what's going on, but at least it might look prettier. Um, 